Now that you've got your environment up, we're going to start taking a look at how to actually do some programming in C++. So I'm going to be using the Emacs editor for mine. And I want to name my file some name. So I'm going to call it example. And then you want CPP as the extension on the end, which stands for C++. So to begin with, um, I'm going to just start with a basic example program just to show you what has to happen um, in the most basic kind of file. So I'm going to include, pound include, so that's a um, number sign, the one on the three, um, IO stream. And that's so I can do, uh, print things in and out to the console. The other thing I want to do is, is I'm going to add in a line called, I'm using namespace std with a semicolon at the end. Um, we will be using something called cout and cn, which are streams. And I have to do std colon colon cout or std colon colon cn every time I use them, unless I use this. It's a little bit like imports in Java, so it allows you to um, not have to type all of that out. It makes your code shorter. So the next thing I need is int main. This is where all programs start in C++, this is wherever main is. And it returns an integer when it's all done. So I'm going to return 0 at the very end of this. Typically, what, the reason that it returns an integer is that, so that you could send back a error code if something went wrong. So if I return something other than 0, typically that means something broke, um, if the command line needs to deal with that. So let's do a simple C out. That's two less than signs there. And then in double quotes, I'm going to say output with a semicolon at the end. So what this does is this basically takes whatever is here and puts it into C out. So it forces it into the command line. So I'm going to do save as control X, control S. And then over here, I'm going to see my example.cpp when I list it out. So I'm going to run the compiler on this. Um, I could just do g++ example.cpp, and that'll create an executable, a.exe. Um, I'm going to name it something slightly better. So there's an extra command where you do dash o, and then what you want the executable to be named. I'm going to give it the same name, and then I do example.cpp. Now if I list, notice that example.exe is listed here. So to run that, I do dot slash example. And now I see output. So it took, ran this program main, printed out the output. OK, so that's kind of nice if I just want to print things out. But what if I want to have some sort of interaction? So what I'm going to show you next is cn. So if I want to put something into a variable, so let's say I want a char. So that's the most basic kind of character. Um, just a single letter or number or whatever it is that's text, that's a char. So I'll call it input. And then cn, and notice that I do two greater than signs instead of two inputs, uh, two less than signs. This says take whatever is, re is typed into the console and put it into this variable. It'll automatically do conversion, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to worry about whether it's a string or a number or whatever. It'll just automatically do that. So now, instead of printing out a string, I'm going to print out input. So whatever's in input should be printed out. So control X, control S to save. I need to recompile it. And now run it again. So notice it's waiting for me. It hasn't terminated. I haven't gone back to the dollar sign. So let's say G. And it prints out a G. Out of curiosity, what happens if I say 5? It prints out the 5. Now, that's not a number. It's treating this as the character. If you think of it as like the character on the keyboard, I can't do math with this, for example. Well, I can, but we'll get to that. Um, so that's a single character. By the way, if I want over here to give it an initial value, I can do that. And I use single quotes for characters. So if I want it to start as an A, then I would do this. So you can say char input equals, this is an assignment. It's not saying are they the same. It takes this A value and puts it into input at the very beginning. So that's how you would actually put a character in. 
So what if I want to deal with numbers now? So let's do int input, and I'll read in the value. So save that, compile this, 45. OK, that's good enough. What about if I say A? So since this is a different kind of thing, it gives me back a 0. So something that's different for those of you that have done Java is what is initially an input if I don't assign it a value? It's a really big kind of random number. Hmm, that's interesting. And then when I assign the value of 3 in and hit enter, it puts that in. So something to know about C++, if you ask it for an int, or any kind of variable for that matter, it does not clear out the contents of wherever this input is, this integer is located. The variable just has whatever bits are there in memory already, and it just gives it to you. And you don't know what's in there. So whatever is in memory, it just gives that to you. And it could be different every time you run the program, potentially. So something that is a good idea in general is always initialize your variables, at least to zero or to whatever the default value is. Because otherwise, you will get who knows what. So now if I do this and initialize it to zero, now I get that back. The other thing is notice that it didn't put a return in. So if you want to put in a return, you can do this. So end L is end line. Notice that you, I string these together. So I have C out, two less than signs input, two less than signs end line. So it actually puts them all together when I do a series of these. So now if I save that, recompile it. So now I'm on the next line. The other thing I can do is, let's say I want to actually put in some strings, for example. So I can say, you entered. And then save it, recompile, you entered 0. Since I haven't entered anything, it's still 0. So that's a way that you can actually put labeling in on your uh, output. You can actually put a bunch of these together. Generally speaking, I would recommend always putting an end line at the end of anything that needs a return. This also flushes out the buffer. Um, otherwise, what may happen is, is you'll try doing C outs, and you won't see them if you get an error, for example. This forces it to actually print it out to the buffer before it proceeds on to the next line. So I recommend always putting an end line in at the end of each of your C outs to make sure that it actually displays. OK, so integers. So int is integers. It's whole numbers only. There's a couple of other ty data types that deal with numbers. So for example, float is a floating point number, a decimal number. So if you need to have a decimal place, then you can do that. There is a short and a long. Those are both other types that are integers. Short uses fewer bits to represent it, and long uses more bits to represent an integer. So if the size of your number matters or storage space matters, then you can use those instead. All right, so what can you do with numbers now that you have these things? So you can do mathematics. So if I read in an input here, this line is kind of useless. I'm going to kill it. Control K. So let's do C out, you enter colon input end line. So let's try adding something to it. So I can say input equals input plus five, for example. So if I save that and run it. I'm going to do control Z to kill the line if I, if I want to exit this program running early. So let's do compile. So I'm going to enter in 34. So I enter in 34. It says I entered in 34. That's this line here. I added 5 and reassigned it back into input. So whatever I entered in, I added 5 to it and then re put that into input and overwrite the value there and then write it back out again. So I can do this with any of the basic arithmetic. I can do plus, minus, times, and divide. So 
plus is that input. I can do like that. I can do times using the asterisk. And then divide is the forward slash. So all of these uh, will work. Um, you can actually do multiple arithmetic uh, values in the same line. If I wanted to do this and multiplication, I'm allowed to do that. Keep in mind it does follow order of operations. So times and divide happen before adding and subtracting. And if that matters to you, you can use parentheses to decide what goes first. So if I want to do it this way instead, I can use parentheses to dictate which order the operation should happen in. Always make sure your parentheses line up, by the way. All right, so what if you want to, so that's a lot of typing. There's a few shortcuts that you may end up seeing. So if I want to do plus five on a value, I can do plus equals five. That's a shortcut to add. And there's a similar thing for minus equals, times equals, divide equals. It basically does this value adds five to whatever it is and reassigns it back into input. If you're only adding one, there's an even shorter way to do it. So if I want to add one to input, I can do input plus plus, and that will add one to input and reassign it back in. So if you were ever wondering what C++ is, it's the C language, one step removed. You added one to it. Isn't that clever? Anyway, so this thing will add one. You can also do plus plus input. And these actually do two different things. So to demonstrate that, let me show you. So I'm going to enter in a line. And I'm going to do to do put it into U entered. So if I can do plus plus in the middle of this line of execution. So if I save this, let's see what I get. So I say 5. So it says you entered 5 on this line, but when I print it out again after that, it says 6. So this particular way of doing it is called postfix. If you do the plus plus, what happens is it actually runs this line, and after this line is done executing, then it adds 1 and reassigns it. So in the middle of the line, it does not do that. Now, if I move it to the beginning, it does the addition beforehand, then executes the line. So it actually does this plus plus input first, and then it actually prints it out. There are times when that matters, so watch out for that. Generally speaking, you can use input plus plus if it's its own execution line, and that usually is fine. If for some reason you need it to actually add one before the line executes, then you would use the plus plus input. All right, so that is the basics of dealing with numbers and arithmetic operations.